Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm very excited to be sharing with you my top 30 what's for dinner ideas. So let's get started. Dinner tonight I am making grilled shrimp and I'm going to make a side of uh, pasta for the kids and uh, spiralized zucchini for us. Uh, so I have about a pound and a half of shrimp here and I'm going to do a little marinade with some olive oil, butter, uh, garlic, and lime juice, and a touch of honey. So here is my marinade. Um, and now I'm just going to, while the shrimp is still kind of drying off from being washed, I'm going to create a dry seasoning. Uh, and it will consist of salt, paprika, Italian seasoning, and red pepper flakes. So here is the seasoning mix, and I'm going to add all my shrimp into the marinade. Toss it so it's all covered. I'm going to toss the seasoning in and mix it up again. So I'm going to let this marinate for about an hour or so. And while that's marinating, I'm also soaking my bamboo skewers so I can uh, add the shrimp to it just before grilling. And then once it's ready to go on a grill, um, you're gonna grill it for, I'm gonna grill it for about two to three minutes per side. For the sauce for the pasta, I'm using some olive oil and butter and I'm going to add some red pepper flakes and garlic once the oil and butter are heated up and then I'm just, at the end, just toss it with some fresh basil from the garden and I'm going to get my zucchini that I spiralized in there and I'm also making a Caesar salad. So I have heated this quite well and then you just throw in some garlic and red pepper flakes and you have to watch the garlic so it doesn't burn. Uh, you cook it for like a minute. And then I am also just uh, cooking up some with the zucchini and I already added the basil to it. I'm just making softening it up. And then the pasta is ready here for the sauce. So the garlic is just about done. For dinner tonight, we are having uh, egg roll in a bowl. And uh, if you have been watching me for a while, you know I absolutely love uh, kitchen gadgets. And this one is one of my favorites. It's the Breville uh, Walk. I uh, gotten it a couple months back and I absolutely love it. And it's fairly large. Uh, so for the egg roll, you will need some sesame oil. Uh, ground meat. Now I suggest either turkey, chicken or pork. I am using pork this time. Sesame seed, I mean um, soy sauce, you need coleslaw, and then you need fresh garlic, some ground ginger, salt to taste if in case if you didn't get enough with a soy sauce. So I'm using actually two packages of meat. I'm making a double so that way we have leftovers for lunch. So you want to have your wok very hot. And then another tool that I like using for ground meat is a painted set ground meat tool. And this won't scratch your non-stick and it just breaks up the meat real nice. So you want to cook your meat completely before you add any other ingredients. So now I'm going to add a teaspoon of ginger. as well as my garlic, which I'm going to press through a garlic press.
and about six tablespoons of soy sauce. I just had enough. I'm going to add my coleslaw mix. I'm adding just a little bit more shredded cabbage because um, I'm making a double batch, but I only had one package of the coleslaw mix. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to put a lid on it and just let the steam cook the cabbage as well. Just for about a minute. For dinner tonight, I'm making bacon ranch chicken. I will be wrapping all of this stuff and chicken breast with in a tin foil I'm making on a barbecue. I will have the recipe link down below. I did not have a ranch seasoning, so I'm kind of creating my own. In here, I have parsley, paprika, paprika is uh, extra, so but um, the parsley, dill weed, paprika. And onion powder then I have some fresh garlic by accident sprinkled some parsley on it and then I also have chives from my garden some butter you will need cheese you will need bacon potatoes if you're low carbon you can add cauliflower on the bottom instead of the potatoes and then you need chicken breast so I'm going to mix my seasoning first and I'm going to put the seasoning a little bit of it over the potatoes mix it up and then I'm going to spread the potatoes on the tin foil and then place the chicken on top and season it more with the seasoning and then put bacon on top and then when it's almost done cooking open up a tin foil and sprinkle with cheese I'm going to add a couple spoons of the seasoning that I pre-mixed here into my potatoes and a little bit on the cauliflower so this is what i have left i had added four teaspoons of the seasoning into potatoes and then two teaspoons of the seasoning on cauliflower and now i'm going to brush my aluminum foil sheets with olive oil and then i'm going to assemble it so I have assembled two just to show you what it looks like. I've got cauliflower, there is seasoned chicken, and the two um, bacons, uh, I just split one into two on top, and the same thing for the potatoes. So they are all assembled, and they will be going on the grill. And just before it, uh, once it's all done, I'm just going to open the packets up, sprinkle some cheese and cook until cheese is melted. I will be adding um, a serving with the side of the sweet kale salad. I'll probably just make half of it. So here they are, I just added cheese. And I was just thinking these would be great for camping, like for your first time when you're setting up, you prepare these at home. And then when you get to your campsite, you can just, once you're done setting up, add them on the fire. And no cleanup whatsoever. You can even eat them out of those pockets, too. And I am making BLT sandwiches with an Instant Pot loaded cauliflower soup.
So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my bacon ready and what I've done is I have opened my pack and I don't know if you guys know but in order for the bacon to cook straight without curling you want to put it in an unheated oven and then once you put it in you turn the oven on to like 375 and you let it cook and it will come out perfectly straight so that is what I'm going to do so I'm going to get my bacon ready for the sandwiches I figured three slices per person and then I'm going to also make a little bit extra to crumble in the soup so I'm gonna finish layering I'm gonna get another pot and then I'm gonna put it in the oven so for the first part of the soup you will need three cups of broth one whole um, cauliflower trimmed off leaves uh, chopped up onion garlic salt and coarse sea salt I will have the recipe linked in the description box and you also need butter so I'm going to melt my butter in the crock pot and I'm going to turn it on at bon saute So my butter is heated, melted. I'm going to add my onion and I'm going to saute it for two to three minutes or until translucent. And while that's sauteing, I'm going to cut up my uh, cauliflower. So I got the leaves off. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be using a immersive blender to blend it all up. So the onion is just about ready. I'm going to add my cauliflower. three cups of broth one teaspoon of garlic and one teaspoon of salt and I'm going to shut it and put it on manual setting and cook on high pressure for five minutes this vent is closed So turn off that, manual, five minutes and high pressure. So the soup is done, it took about I would say maybe 12 minutes from start to finish and now I am releasing it and that's going to take another five or so minutes and then for the next step, I have half a cup of cream, you can use milk as well, four ounces of cubed cream cheese, and a cup of sharp cheddar cheese, and then I also have my blender. So once it's done, I'm going to blend up my uh, cauliflower, and uh, first I'm going to turn it on saute, you can just turn it off, but I'm going to do it on a saute, and then you, uh, I'm going to blend it up, and then I'm going to add the rest of the stuff. And once uh, all the cheese is melted, it, and it, it's done. I also want to show you that the bacon is done. It 
smells really good. The cream. Cute cheese. And the shredded cheese. So here are all the trimmings for the sandwiches. I've got lettuce, tomato, different cheese, some bacon, bread, mayo, so then there's crumbled bacon. I like to put in uh, jalapenos in my soup, and then there's chives and spring onion. For dinner tonight, I am making spaghetti. I have the spaghetti squash in the oven already, so let me show you how I prepared it. For spaghetti squash, you wanna cut it in half and then remove all the seeds from the middle. So all of this stuff, remove it out. So now that the middle is removed, I'm going to flip it and poke it with the fork. I'm going to drizzle it with olive oil and add some salt and pepper. So now it's ready and it's going to go in a preheated oven at 400, cel 400 and uh, bake for about half an hour to 40 minutes. So here it is all done. So I just took a fork and pulled it apart like that. It's hard to do it with one hand but it kind of ends up looking like this. And then for spaghetti, you, for spaghetti sauce, I am making it with actually these strained tomatoes, onion, garlic, red pepper. I'm going to add some Parmesan, some vegeta, some basil and fresh oregano and uh, salt and pepper. And I'm already preheating the oil and then I have some ground turkey to put in there. So I'm sauteing my veggies first. I started with onion until it's translucent and I added garlic, cooked it until it's fragrant. And then I added some red peppers. So once the peppers were softened and almost cooked, I added some uh, turkey meat and I'm going to cook this and then I'm going to season it with salt and pepper first before I add the sauce. Meat is ready, so, so now I'm going to add the sauce. So I've added the sauce, I have also added my herbs and I also added the crushed red uh, pepper a little bit, I did not mention that. And now I'm going to bring it to a gentle roll and then I'm going to turn it down and simmer it for about 20 minutes to half an hour. So now I have added about a quarter cup of Parmesan. I paired the spaghetti with some kale, sweet kale salad. I typically do Caesar, but I was out, all out of Caesar dressing. For dinner tonight, I'm making slow cooker pork tostadas and I have added some pork tenderloin. It's frozen still with some garlic, apple cider vinegar, honey, water, and uh, salt, pepper. And I also, the recipe doesn't call for it, but um, added some adobo seasoning and some red pepper. 
uh, red crushed pepper flakes. And because the pork is frozen, I'm going to cook it. I should plug it in first. <clears throat> On low for 10 hours. It is, maybe I'll do actually nine hours there, nine hours. And I'll double check. Uh, I'll watch it as it goes. It's, it calls for six to eight hours, but because my pork is still a little frozen, I added a little bit more time. So the pork to, took um, actually seven hours to, uh, to cook from frozen and here it is I shredded it and now I'm just keeping it on warm I had made a salad and I have a recipe for this salad over on my January meal plan uh, blog I will link it down before, uh, below if you want to check that out but I will link the recipe itself down below as well and then I just chopped up more avocados some tomatoes and shredded some cheese we're gonna put some um, spinach uh, and I just want to show you what we're gonna use to put these on so my husband's gonna use the full he picked this up at Costco yesterday their parmesan cheese wraps he's never had this before so he's gonna try that out but I am going to use some corn tortillas they're just small and with the portion picks i can have two they're frozen i have to heat them up and then my kids love the empanada one so i'm just preheating my cast iron to put these up in it so here's mine and just to let you know my husband wasn't crazy about the wraps For dinner tonight, we are having um, some salmon with broccoli and the salad from yesterday because I had tons left over. So for the salmon, I had marinated it for a couple hours in maple syrup, fresh garlic, pinch of ginger, soya sauce, and some black pepper. I will have the marinade recipe link down below for you to check out. And I'm going to just sear it on both sides over some olive oil and on my cast iron. And I'm going to bake it for maybe about 10-15 minutes. For us not being huge salmon lovers, this recipe was pretty good. The marinade is great. And it went really well with the leftover salad. For dinner tonight, I'm making Korean chicken thighs. It is a paleo dish, so for that you will need some honey, sesame oil. I've made this many times, so, and I shared it, I think, on my other channel, but I will have the recipe link down below. And then you need the Korean gochujang. Um, it's like a, a pepper paste, a red pepper paste, and then you need soy sauce, ginger, sesame seed, and some garlic. I usually prefer fresh ginger, but I'm all out. I actually just placed an order for it, so the seasoning will have to do. With this stuff is, so it's hot pepper bean paste. It is quite spicy, and I don't, I put about half the amount that they ask for. So I have my chicken thighs all ready and then the marinade. Now, if you have time, you can marinate the chicken from one to 24 hours, or you can just pour the sauce over the chicken, put it in a preheated oven at 425, cook it for about half an hour, and then add it to a broiler for about 10 to 15 minutes under the broiler. And that will give you a nice red um, chicken, kind of crunchy chicken. So it's ready and now it's gonna go in the oven. To go with it, I'm doing a coleslaw salad. This is a coleslaw salad mix. And I'm going to use some Asian sesame dressing. This is a pretty good dressing and it does, it only has like three grams of sugar for tablespoons. It's a little bit on a higher side, but it does taste 
pretty good and I don't put a lot of it because we're not huge salad dressing fans. And then I'm going to make some garlic green beans to go with it. And I just saute them with some butter and garlic. This is still one of our favorite ways to make chicken thighs. For dinner tonight, I am making a tortellini soup. I am making a double batch so that way I can freeze some for lunches. And I, in here, heated up some olive oil, butter, and onion, garlic, and then I have two springs of fresh rosemary. So now I'm going to add, you're supposed to add uh, um, cut up tomatoes, uh, canned tomatoes. I have fr uh, frozen fresh ones, so eight cups. I have a teaspoon of uh, basil, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, a tablespoon of fresh oregano, a whole bottle of tomato sauce, some cream, and then I have my homemade stock. And then once that cooks for about 20 minutes, I will add some tortellini. This soup is so delicious with a little bit of Parmesan on top and it's a great hit with daycare kids as well. For dinner, we are having chicken stir fry. I am going to cut up my chicken breast and I'm preheating my wok at high sear and I'm heating up some pure sesame oil in there. So I just added salt and pepper. So I have added some garlic, some ginger, and just a sprinkle of crushed red peppers. And now I'm going to add just a pinch of uh, safflower. Or saffron. I think that's what it is. I don't know what it's called. I think it's saffron. But just a little tiny bit. For the veggies, I'm going to cut up an onion. I have some snow peas. I will do one bell pepper, and then I have the kale blend ready veggies for stir fry. It has broccoli, Brussels sprouts, red cabbage, and kale. So I've added all my veggies, and I'm going to add some soy sauce to it. So I've added some soy sauce. Hoisin sauce, and I'm just finishing up the rice. I do apologize for the barking, and the meat's done under 20 minutes. For dinner tonight, I am making garlic sesame chicken uh, turkey wraps. So I have two pounds of turkey. Then I have 10 cloves of garlic, um, half a cup of sesame, half a cup of honey, two tablespoons of ketchup, and two teaspoons of rice vinegar. And then these are, I'm just adding these. Uh, they're not in the recipe. I will have the recipe link down below, but I'm adding four cups of shredded cabbage and one whole yellow pepper. And then you will need some sesame oil. I am preheating my sesame oil and I'm using my Breville wok. I love this thing. I will, if I can find it, I will link it down in the description box. I got mine at HomeSense or Marshalls. Ours are together. So I have added garlic. I have started browning the turkey and then midway I have added all my garlic and I just pressed it with my pan garlic press in. Now that my turkey is no longer pink, I'm going to add my veggies. I'm going to cover it up and let the veggies soften before I add my sauce. So now it's time to add the sauce. And just before it's the, uh, cooked so with the sauce, I'm going to add the sesame seeds, which I forgot to mention. 
So these last two meals, I did forget to take a picture of the final finished product. So make sure you check out the description box for links to my blog where I share most of these recipes and the extra recipes that I used. And if this is your first time stopping by, I would love it if you consider subscribing and joining my YouTube family. So until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching. For dinner tonight, I'm making roasted chicken in the oven. I'm roasting the whole chicken and I'm going to make a cucumber salad with some spring onion. And for the dressing, I'm using uh, Greek yogurt, plain. You can use sour cream. I'm using yogurt, salt, pepper, and a little bit of vinegar. I am also making some veggies. First, I'm trying it in an air fryer and I've got zucchini, uh, tomato, some uh, red onion and pepper. We'll see how it turns out. So here is the chicken. We started uh, cutting it up and I just seasoned it with some salt, pepper, garlic powder and paprika and just um, drizzled some olive oil in, on it. I did make some gravy from the drippings. Uh, and I just added uh, the drippings, a little bit of wine, and some cornstarch with water. And my son wanted some stuffing. So I had one of these stuffing mixes left over. It's gluten-free uh, from uh, the Thanksgiving, no, Christmas. Not that I, I'm not gluten-free, but at the time that's all they had at the store I was at, so I just picked it up. Ended up using something else, so I have it left over, so decided to use it. And now I put salt and pepper onto my salad. I'm going to add some vinegar and then about two tablespoons of yogurt. And the veggies are done. They do look pretty good. So once we were done eating the chicken, I threw in the carcass, well my husband actually did, and added all the roasted vegetables plus some onion, a uh, couple carrots and uh, celery in here and cooked it. It took about 45 minutes for uh, cooking and then half an hour for it to come to pressure and half an hour for it to come down in pressure. And I have some cooking broth ready for all my other recipes coming up. For dinner tonight, I am making fish two ways. Uh, the one way will be Mediterranean fish, which I shared a recipe on that one on Friday. And the next one, I'm going to do an air fryer fish, which is gonna be battered uh, for the kids. So to prepare the air fryer fish, I have my fish ready. I have added uh, nothing to it because I have seasoned my breadcrumbs with some paprika salt, vegeta, and a little bit of pepper. I have buttermilk and eggs, egg in here, and I have a pancake mix in here. So I'm going to dip it into the egg mixture, then into the pancake, then into the egg mixture, and then into the breadcrumbs, and cook it at 390 for 12 minutes in the air fryer. I also made a Greek salad to go with it. And here is the fish with the bruschetta on it. And the lightly breaded fish is right here as well. For dinner, I am making the stuffed bell pepper soup. And uh, the, here are some of the ingredients. So we need beef broth, onions, peppers, garlic, ground beef. I am using the tomato, strained tomatoes and tomato paste and then um, I will be making it, making it keto friendly so I will instead of rice I will be putting cauliflower in it and then you also need some seasonings. You brown the beef before you add the vegetables. I've added most of the, uh, uh, all the vegetables and most of the herbs. I still need to add bay leaf but that goes after I add the tomatoes. You so I'm going to cook this for about three minutes until the vegetables are softened. So I've added my broth, Woo. 
and tomato sauce um, brought it to boil and now I'm simmering it for about half an hour and I'll see if I need to add tomato paste or not depending on how thick it is rice my cauliflower and now I'm going to add it to the soup here it is now I'm gonna bring it up to the boil and it will be all done here it is it tasted delicious my kids run crazy about the texture Today for dinner, we are having a chicken bake, um, baked chicken in the oven, I guess. And um, here are my chicken breasts, and I will season them with basil, oregano, garlic, pepper, some parsley, red pepper flakes, and then I will pin fry it just uh, to brown it on each side with some um, avocado oil in my pan and then while that's browning i'm gonna cut up my veggies and i'm just using stuff i have on hand i'm gonna add red onion to this so zucchini peppers red onion and tomatoes and then i'm going to cook those once the chickens i'm gonna cook those a little bit just to soften them up i'm gonna mix it all in my baking pan and sprinkle it with cheese i'm using parmesan and mozzarella and bake the rest of the time in the oven. So here is the chicken cooking and now I'm going to cut up my veggies. So I cut up the veggies that I'm going to cook after the chicken is done. I will be adding tomatoes into the baking dish. I'm not gonna pre-cook them before. So I added the bacon, I added some broccoli so we'll see how that ends up tasting. And I am just cooking up some veggies here that I'm going to be adding in here. So here it is. I have added tomatoes and the veggies and then tomatoes on top and then I have added a parsley, basil and oregano. So it's all done and I'm added both parmesan and mozzarella. I'm going to put it in the oven at 400 for about half an hour to 40 minutes until the chicken is done. I will be covering it with tin foil. So here's the chicken with veggies and I just put it with some Caesar salad. For dinner tonight, we are having tacos, beef tacos, so here's my meat. I cut up some onion and garlic, made some taco seasoning, cut up some tomatoes, and I will be adding tomato paste as well, and some red pepper. I will also be making some guac, and for that, you, I am just making a small batch, so I'm going to do two avocados, half a lime, half a jalapeno pepper. If it was just me, I would probably put the whole thing, but I have kids that don't like as spicy. Quarter of an onion and some tomatoes and some cilantro. So I'm gonna have my husband cook the meat and I will be making the guac. So here is the meat already. And all the trimmings, we got cheese, different sauces. Uh, there's homemade salsa, the guac, some of the tomatillo, the salsa verde, sour cream, and I'm just going to cut up some jalapenos for myself. I am having it in a salad. The kids are having it with the crunchy shells. For dinner time, I have made a pork roast. It's a pork loin roasted with some Montreal steak seasoning and garlic and some baked potatoes with some olive oil and pepper salt and garlic and then I'm making some garlic green beans. I just sauteed some garlic with some olive oil and tossed some green beans and I just cook them until they become really bright green and we like them a little bit crunchy so not too not too long. For dinner tonight, I am making Zuppa Toscana, which is an Italian soup, and you will need some potatoes, garlic, onion, uh, bacon. I am using our homemade cured bacon, Italian sausage, I'm using hot Italian sausage, some chicken broth, 
I have my homemade stuff. Uh, whipping cream or cream, uh, kale or spinach. And then you're gonna need salt and pepper and some crushed red peppers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat up some olive oil and cook my sausage and bacon. While that's cooking, I'm going to cut up my veggies. So my sausage is cooked. I have thawed out my broth and now I'm just cooking up some bacon. So I've added onions, cooked them, then I added garlic, and now I'm going to sprinkle two tablespoons of flour over it, stir it up, and then add broth. And you want to stir while you're adding broth. Now I have added potatoes, and I'm going to bring it to boil. So it came to a boil, and I cooked it for 15 minutes, just gently boiling. And I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients, including sausage and bacon, a cup of cream, about three handfuls of spinach, some salt, pepper, and the red pepper flakes. For dinner today, I'm making Thai lettuce wraps, but I'm using pork instead of chicken or turkey just to change things up. So I am preheating my wok. It's ready now, and I added some sesame oil in it. And I'm going to add my pork, and while that's cooking, I'm going to chop up my veggies. So my meat is ready. I'm going to add some ginger, uh, gin some ginger, red curry paste, some hoisin sauce, all of my veggies, and some garlic. All my veggies are in, and all the seasoning. I just have to add hoisin sauce, and then I'm going to cover and let it cook for a couple minutes. For dinner tonight, I am making some shepherd stew. I've got my oil heating up. I have pureed some onion, well, a kilo and a half to be precise. I have chopped up some pickles. There's garlic in here. And oh, I have been marinating my meat uh, for about two and a half hours now. I will be sharing this recipe at a later date. I am just trying to figure out the best recipe that I like. So I'm going to be trying this shepherd's stew several times until I nail it to the recipe that I actually, well, that I like the best. So stay tuned, probably in spring, late spring, early summer. And I'm also making a fresh loaf of bread in my bread maker. The stew almost done. I just have to add some pasta droppings in it. And then I have my bread. It's done, it's very hot, so it needs some time to cool before I cut it. So I cut up the bread and then this is just about done. And here is the little pasta pieces. They just need to cook a little bit more. For dinner tonight, we are having chicken burritos. I'm going to get my chicken ready in the crock pot and I have seasoned it really well with some homemade taco seasoning. I will link up the recipe down below for that and now I'm just adding some salsa for cooking and I'm going to cook this in for, uh, on um, I think I'm gonna put it on low for about five hours so here are all the fixing I've got cheese some jalapeno peppers sauces salsa a little bit of uh, avocado with just some salt, sour cream. I've got uh, some lettuce that i broken up into little pieces. And I have shredded the chicken. 
and then I also made some Mexican rice and some veggies just sauteed some more veggies and then we are going to use the, these tortillas or make a salad and going into the press after we assemble it into it so tonight we are having drunken noodle which is a 21 day fix recipe i am making with the chicken instead of beef just because i had chicken out so i had cut up my chicken and mushrooms got my garlic ready and some chili peppers i calls for dry i only had fresh all the same i guess maybe not we'll see and then these are some other veggies but these are the first things that i'm gonna cook and it is an instant pot meal i am preheating my instant pot on the saute so here's the first part and while this is sauteing i'm gonna be mixing it and uh, stirring it and cutting up my the rest of the veggies so I've now added soy sauce and noodles in here as well as water and I'm going to add all my veggies and stir it all up together. So I'm adding my peppers and my carrots. I am also adding snow peas and bok choy. And you are not to stir it. Closing it up, making sure the vent is shut, and I'm going to cook on high pressure, so I'm going to turn the saute off, then I'm going to do manual high pressure for three minutes. So it is done, now I'm just going to garnish it with some green onion and basil. For dinner tonight, I am making egg roll in a bowl, and I've got my, actually this is lean ground pork, and then I have some ginger, garlic, soy sauce, some spring onion, I was going to do um, fresh ginger, but the recipe calls for brown ginger, so I thought, why not? And then I'm also going to add two bags of mixed coleslaw, just for the cabbage. So now that the pork is ready, I'm going to add two bags of the coleslaw. So I have added the coleslaw, I have added soy sauce, some ginger and garlic. So I am adding some fresh red pepper flakes as well. So I have garnished it with some green peppers, uh, green peppers, uh, green onion. <laughs> For dinner tonight, I'm making chicken and pasta, and I'm going to get my chicken started first. I'm just going to bake it in the oven, and I have added salt, pepper, garlic, uh, red pepper flakes, and some vegeta onto my chicken. If you don't know what vegeta is, it is a... Why does this happen? It is a vegetable seasoning. So for the pasta sauce, um, this is the video, the viral feta cheese and tomato sauce that everybody's making. So I thought I'd give it a try. If you're not familiar, you'll need salt, pepper, uh, Italian seasoning, oregano. And I've seen many different variations of this. So this is what I chose to do. Some garlic, feta, and cherry tomatoes, and olive oil. So. I'm going to put it all together and I'll tell you what I did. So I'm going to add 
olive oil. Then I'm adding feta. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Then I'm going to drizzle olive oil all over feta. Now I'm going to add all of my seasonings except basil. So here it is, I have added about a, two teaspoons of oregano, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, two gar garlic cloves, some uh, sprinkle of salt, not too much because feta salty, some pepper, and now it's going to go into the oven at 400 for 30 minutes. So I got my pasta water cooked, uh, boiling, getting ready to boil. I'm preheating some olive oil and I'm going to saute just some veggies to go with it. Uh, I like to have a ton of veggies in my pasta, so I'm going to add some spinach. I have onion, garlic, mushrooms, and red peppers. And once that's done, I'm going to just uh, warm up the uh, spiralized zucchini because um, I will probably mix mine with zucchini and pasta because I have a little bit of, uh, I have one carb uh, serving left, so I might, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll see how I feel once I'm eating. But uh, yeah, so that's the next step and I'm gonna make Caesar salad to go with it as well. So I took the, uh, the tomatoes and feta out, stirred it up and added some basil. And my zucchini's ready pasta is just about done and the chicken is done and I just have to add some, some uh, dressing to the salad for dinner tonight we are having two sheep and dinners uh, something very simple last weekend. I spent like four hours cooking. So I just wanted something simple for this weekend and I will have mm, enough for lunch for sure. Maybe even a little bit for dinner for next week and that, uh, for tomorrow as well. So over here, I just have some sausages and potatoes. I kept the sausages whole because I know my son will want to have a sausage on the bun and some potatoes. And over here I have, so this is pork sausage, and over here I have a turkey sausage, one pork sausage, and then um, tons of shrimp with a whole zucchini, whole pepper, whole red onion, and some salt and pepper. I did season the shrimp last night with some Cajun seasoning and left it in the fridge overnight. And I drizzled everything with olive oil, and now it's gonna go in the oven for about I think about 40 minutes or so, maybe a little less for the shrimp one. For dinner tonight, I am making baked cod for us and just pan fried um, and lightly breaded with flour for the kids. And I have seasoned my cod with Cajun seasoning, which is cayenne pepper, some onion powder, oregano, gar uh, salt, pepper, uh, red pepper flakes, garlic, salt, thyme, and paprika. And I'm going to bake ours with some garlic, uh, olive oil, and a little bit of butter. And I'm also making home fries for the kids, and I'm going to make uh, steam some veggies for us. The potatoes are in an air fryer. I started my veggies here. I'm just gonna steam them up, preheating the oil, and I'm just gonna toss the fish into the flour and then into the hot oil. For dinner tonight, we are having a quick and easy dinner. I had thrown some, a head of cauliflower and some baby potatoes with some chicken thigh, seasoning with some paprika, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and red pepper flakes, and in the oven for about an hour it goes. 
and then I'm making a salad with it. I have added some romaine lettuce and spinach with some cucumbers, tomatoes, red onion, and some of these pickled pepperoncini peppers. And I'm going to give this Olive Garden Italian seasoning a try. I don't typically use, I mean, dressing that season. I don't typically do seasoning. Usually it's all oil and vinegar and salt and pepper or a lemon lemon juice but thought I'd live on the wild side and try this out it doesn't look that bad and the ingredients is pretty straightforward so um, I'll let you know what I think For dinner tonight, I am making uh, instant pot cream of broccoli soup and I have my veggies all cut up already. I got uh, onions, uh, celery and carrots. I have uh, broccoli, I've got my garlic, I have my homemade bone broth and then I have to shred some ch uh, cheese and I will be adding a half and half. So I start off with sauteing my onions, garlic, celery, and carrots first. So my veggies are almost ready. You just want them to soften. I'm going to add my broccoli and my stock or brown broth. I'm just gonna throw that in there and uh, cause I have more time than just five minutes or whatever it takes time for it to come to pressure my bone bone broth is in there broccoli is in there i'm going to close it up make sure the vent is off and cancel my saute turn my manual on for five minutes high pressure and let that cook and once it comes to pressure i'm going to release it so i've added my cream and my cheese i'm gonna add salt and pepper and it will be done as soon as the cheese is melted For dinner tonight we are having french dip and i have been cooking it in a crock pot for about nine hours i have a full recipe which i will link in a at the end for you to check out um how to make this i just didn't want it to repeat myself but um yeah it's pretty delicious and i serve it with some salad baguette with melted cheese balsamic glazed chicken and i've got my olive oil uh, olive garden italian season um dressing i don't typically buy dressing but everybody raved about this one so i picked it up just to give it a try and it's from costco it's not too too bad as far as the ingredients go so then i'm gonna add some garlic uh two tablespoons of honey and three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and i'm using chicken thighs and then i'm going to bake them in the oven so here it is it's gonna go in the oven for about half an hour or so 40 minutes and then i'm just gonna make some salad to go with it just to show you the chicken is done and the salad for a side i know it's a little boring but i guess it's not boring if it tastes good well i hope you had enjoyed this video i hope it gave you tons of inspiration for your dinners uh, with these budget-friendly, somewhat healthy meals. So until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching.